Hey there guys, welcome back to ComTox in another video. So in my other video, I talked about emergency communications, you know, and, and making my Beofeng here capable of doing that. Now, like I said, that's only going to be used in emergencies, but mostly it's going to be used as a scanner, right? Just listen to frequencies, listen to FM radio, and so on and so forth. But let me tell you why I got a GMRS license. So cruising around and looking at different GMRS radios, which is like general mobile, general <laughs> mobile radio systems. That's what GMRS stands for. Uh, that's kind of basically your handheld walkie talkies, right? Now your Beofangs can be programmed for FRS, which is family radio systems and GMRS general mobile radio systems, but you can't legally use them in that capacity. Uh, you have it because it can transmit on other frequencies. You have to have something that is pre-programmed for the GMRS frequencies and cannot be changed from that. You know, if you have a radio that's only transmits on uh, GMRS frequencies, but can scan other frequencies, that's fine, but you can't transmit out. So I just thought I would clear some of those up real quick. Uh, but let me tell you why I got one. One, it was really easy. I got a certification number basically from the FCC by signing up on their website. And from that, I was able to apply for a GMRS license. There was no test required. Uh, there was no other information other than like an address of where basically you're going to operate from or your home address. Some basic personal information, name, date of birth, stuff like that, phone number. And then there was a fee of $70. Well, I got the certification in the mail. Well, not in the mail, but in my email last night. And, you know, today I have a license. So, like I said, $70. And it's good for 10 years. It used to be 5 years. Now it's 10 years. So you're probably wondering, who can operate? Like, if you have the license, who can operate it? Like, it's family radio system slash general mobile radios like who can use it so obviously anybody who like anyone who holds an individual license can operate their own station right now that also extends to any immediate family members and the FCC defines immediate family members as their spouse children grandchildren, stepchildren, parents, grandparents, stepparents, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, and in-laws. That's a pretty good group of people. So if you were to set up your own GMRS radio system, and you can have a repeater with this license to extend your range, let's say your family lives around town and you want to set up an emergency communication system, you could, you yourself could get a license and you could maybe get somebody else have a license. You know, somebody that lives in the middle, set up a repeater station there. Boom, you now have your own radio system that you could contact anybody with. Now, granted, anybody else can use your repeater too if they hop on that frequency. Now, some things to keep in mind. If you do get a license, you open yourself up to inspections, right? So... If an FCC authorized representative, you know, wants to inspect your station, whether it be a mobile unit in your car, handheld units, you know, a base station, fixed station, then you have to make it available to them. It's just like any kind of inspection done by the ATF or whatever. If you, you know, generally they never do it, but it's a possibility. So what is included in that is obviously the GMRS station and all the equipment used in connection with that station. Any station records and following documents such as, uh, you know, a copy of each response to an FCC violation if you've ever gotten one, each written permission received from the FCC such as your license or whatever, and any written agreement regarding, you know, any kind of arrangements you may have with the FCC. But yeah, so you have to make all that available just like any other kind of inspection. Now, there are some prohibited things you're not allowed to do with GMRS. So, you may not communicate messages with anything that's against the law. <laughs> Basically, you can't use radios in the, you know, 
event of you robbing a bank. Like, you can't use it to commit crime, basically. Um, you can't spread any false or deceptive messages. Basically, you can't lie on the radio, which is interesting. No coded messages or messages with hidden meanings. And they're not talking about, like, 10 codes, like 10-4, 10-8, things like that. Those are okay, but no, like, Morse... I'm, Morse code's not really a coded message, but no, like, spy stuff, whatever you want to call it. Uh, no music, whistling, sound effects, or material to amuse or entertain. So no fun allowed here. None. Uh, no advertisements or offers for the sale of goods or services. No advertisements for political crap. Um, international distress signals such as the word Mayday. Unless, you know, it's actually, uh, you know, an emergency. <laughs> so, uh... Also, messages, which are both conveyed by a wireline control link and transmitted by a GMRS station. So, any messages to any amateur radio service or unauthorized station. So, don't talk to somebody that doesn't have a license. Continuous or uninterrupted transmissions, except for communications involving the immediate safety of life and or property. So, basically, you know, don't hog the radio system just because you want to talk. <laughs> That's what Twitch is for. Uh, so, messages for public address systems, you know, you're not transmitting for somebody else. And all kinds of stuff. Also, your radio antenna cannot be tall enough to be a hazard to aircraft. So, that's one of the other limitations, is you can't have a super tall radio antenna. Now, you have to identify yourself if you have a license, right? So, each GMRS station has to be identified by transmission of your call sign. So let's say your call sign is WTFC474, right? You have to say that at the end of uh, pretty much every transmission. Now, obviously, if you're talking to family and stuff and you're not making a broad net transmission, you know, it's only within your little group, generally it's okay. So you must transmit your call sign following a single transmission or a series of transmissions. And after 15 minutes, and at least once every 15 minutes thereafter, during a series of transmissions lasting more than 15 minutes. So basically, if you're going to talk for a long time, it's kind of like doing a commercial break. Okay, stop, you know, this is station, WTF, you know, whatever. And then you can just go on about your business. Now the power limits. For transmitting right so there's different levels of you know transmission strength so basically you must be capable of operating within the allowable power ranges even though you have a license you're still restricted to how strong how powerful your radio can be now the transmitter output of mobile repeater and base stations cannot exceed 50 watts Now, 50 watts is pretty strong you, you can get some pretty decent range out of that you know if everything's set up the right way and you got the right antennas and all that but it says the transmitter power of fixed stations must not exceed 15 watts not a whole lot but you know still pretty powerful now when it comes down to handheld units and once again you can't use a Beofing, but if you do have your own handheld unit, you cannot exceed 5 watts. So, that's kind of shitty, but that's anything that's in the 462 megahertz interstitial channel range. And anything on the 467 megahertz interstitial channel cannot exceed half a watt. So, 0.5 watt. Can't go above it. But, yeah, overall, not too bad. You, um... You can do a lot of stuff. You might as well get the license if you're going to be operating, you know, high power GMRS <clears throat> transmitters. You can use it mobily. Like, for example, this one is 180 bucks. It's a 50 watt GMRS mobile radio. You can install this at a base station at a house, in a vehicle, whatever. And, uh, you know, you, you have yourself a high-powered one. Now, this one is totally good to go because you can scan other channels, but you can't transmit on any other channels. It's only good for GMRS. And you can use privacy, you know, channels, privacy tones. That's what these are. And all kinds of stuff. It's This one's pretty decent, honestly. 
It's got a lot of good features. Not badly priced. You get yourself a decent radio and you're good to go. And then, of course, you know, you can get a bunch of other stuff. You like these GMRS handhelds. You see these at Walmart stuff all the time. Does anybody get a license to operate those? No. But if you want to go full power with some stuff and, you know, you want to be all in the clear no matter what, you know, 70 bucks for a license that's good for 10 years, not that big a deal. Um, but yeah, definitely read up on stuff, see what you can and can't do. Uh, that was just kind of a general overview of some of the laws. There's all kinds of different stuff out there, but I just wanted to give a quick, you know, just wanted to touch on those real quick. But yeah, anyway guys, really appreciate you joining me in today's video. If you have any other questions, leave them down below. Shoot me an email at coptalks at gmail.com. Hopefully I can help you out. Hopefully this helped you out. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you spending some time with me today. And uh, yeah, stay safe. Be good to each other out there. You know, maintain good contact with close family and friends. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.